So in this video, I'd like to show you how you can use ChatGPT reasoning models, such as the O3 Mini High, to create interpreted tables for you from your M plus output. So if we were to run this model right here, it's just a CFA. Let me see, save this, run this. It runs and it produces an HTML output. We can see that over here in our saved folder. If I were to sort by date modified here, you can see I have the CFA HW HTML file and I can drag and drop this over to ChatGPT. So let's do that. Grab that, ChatGPT. I'm actually going across a virtual server. So let me just copy this file. I know my clipboard will work here. I'll paste this file here. Here it is. And now I'll drag this into ChatGPT. So it now has this output. Now I'm going to ask it to create a fornell larker table for convergent and discriminant validity and a model fit table and calculate the composite reliability and the AVE. So here's a good prompt. Here's the output from a CFA run in M+. Can you report on convergent and discriminant validity and model fit? You could produce a fornell larker table, strictly lower triangle matrix, with CR and AVE as columns on the left side and a model fit table with interpretation. Keep everything very concise and parsimonious. Also make sure the values in the resulting table have three decimals. Let's see what this does. Again, I'm using O3 mini high. Do not try to do this on one of these other models like 4.0. It probably won't work. So O3 mini high, I believe works. Let's run this. It's going to think for a while, so I'm going to speed this up. And look at that, it reasoned for about two minutes, and here's what it comes up with. The interpretation is that all factors have AVE greater than 0.5 and CR is greater than 0.7, supporting convergent validity. Each construct's square root of the AVE, which it apparently didn't put on the diagonal for us, exceeds its correlation with other constructs. And here is the lower left triangle matrix with the CR on the left, the AVE in this column and the correlations right here. And the model fit summary right here with RMSEA good, CFI excellent, TLI excellent, and SRMR acceptable. Now if I'd like, I can ask it to go ahead and put the square root of the AVE on the diagonal. I'm going to do that and let it think for a sec. While it's doing that, I'm going to go and double check some of these values just to ensure they are correct. To do that, I can go over to M plus, and here's the output. Let's go down to the standardized model results, zoom in. Let's just do this for, let's say, productivity. Let me grab these estimates. Actually, that's quite a few. Let me grab these ones from satisfaction with work. Stick it in Excel. And square these and check the average of these. And we get 0.599, rounded up as 0.6 with that fourth decimal. We go look at the AVE it gave us. And for productivity, I removed the AVE and composite reliability on this one, but I can go back up. And the AVE it gave us for satisfaction with work was exactly 0.6, which is what we just calculated. So we can assume that these are correct. Also, we can have it show us its math if we'd like. So we now have a Fornell Larker table and a model fit table that we can use and just copy and paste into Word. And we didn't have to sort through and sift through and recalculate and write M plus syntax to calculate composite reliability and AVE. That's pretty nice. Hope that helps. I just wanted to try this one more time, actually. I'm going to edit this prompt so that you can have a good clean prompt. And I'm going to tell it to put the uh, AVE on the diagonal, the square root of the AVE on the diagonal. And then I'm also going to ask it to show us its calculations so that we can verify. All right, I'm going to run that, but I'm just going to skip to the end. Okay, it finished. It reasoned for about a minute and a half. Here's that table. It has composite reliability and AVE, same values as I saw before. And on the diagonal, it has bolded the square root of the AVE. And model fit. 
And here are the formulas. So it says AVE is essentially the average squared loading. And composite reliability formula is right here. And so here are the actual calculations. So for example, for prod, it squared each loading and then summed up those squares and then divided by five and came out with the AVE. That is correct. Shows me this also for composite reliability and how it calculated that. I could verify that if I'd like. And then for the square root of the AVE, it shows me how it got that. So there you have it. Once again, I hope that's helpful.